Hey guys, Arlie here, CrossFit Grandview. We're trying to build a in-home, kind of a strongman gym with a very minimal budget, with stuff you can pick up, and challenge that I kind of put on myself is stuff that I can also use after all this nonsense is over for projects I can do outside, certain things like that. So uh, we'll give you a quick rundown of everything, and then we will go from there. All right, guys, so going through this receipt, I did promise that it would be under $100, and it was $96.23. Um, I probably couldn't have gotten any closer than that um, as I was going through. So just going through a couple things that I bought. Um, I bought 12 feet of this 5 eighths rope. Um, we're going to use it for handles for kettlebells. It's not something that I created. Um, I did see someone do it online, so I'm going to see how I can manage it. Um, I bought some five gallon buckets. Those are on the ground um, to my side. We'll use those in a little bit. We got two of those guys. We got some two gallon buckets. Those we are actually going to use as molds for some kettlebells that we can create. From there, I have a um, measuring container. It's a 12 quart measuring container, uh, something that I've needed for a while and just haven't used. I've used a little handheld measuring thing for everything around my house, so that'll be nice to have. I bought an 80 pound bag of concrete. We're going to use that concrete for for uh, making the kettlebells themselves. I bought a couple bags, four pounds, or four bags, I believe, of some gravel, some all-purpose gravel. Again, we're gonna use that just as some weight that we can add and take out of some buckets. And then from there, I bought a five feet PVC pipe, five foot PVC pipe. Um, it's a half inch diameter. I'm not exactly sure what diameter barbells are specifically, but um, with that half inch diameter, I could get a full hook grip on the bar. It feels like the size that we have at the gym and a lot of the stuff that ran, runs through my house is half inch PVC as well. Um, then I also bought a post hole. I've always called it a spud bar. I don't exactly know what it's called, but it's this thing right behind me here. Um, we are gonna use this as a makeshift barbell and I'm gonna show you how we can put that together, throw some weight on it in a semi-sketchy way, but again, it's an at-home gym um, and we're gonna be able to use all this stuff for later, so stick around. All right, guys, so one thing that I did not buy at Lowe's, but I did have on hand, and hopefully you have some on hand too, are ratchet straps, um, just to tie stuff down in the backs of cars, stuff like that. If you don't have them, they're probably 10 bucks a piece, if I had to guess, nothing too expensive. But one thing that they allow us to do is make a device that allows us to use for pooling. So I have a lot of clients that right now only are able to use body weight stuff. With that, um, one of the harder things to do with body weight is some sort of pulling motion, especially like an inverted pulling motion. So um, this is one side of the ratchet strap. This is one of the sides that you tie down and then it attaches to this side of the ratchet strap that I tied in a knot up here. What I was able to do with the ratchet strap is because there's this webbing right here on here, this actually sits inside the frame of the door. So I have this attached to the door leading to my garage. This guy loops up into the frame. That's all I did was throw it over. And then from there, take it easy as you pull, but it will actually wedge itself between the door frame and the door itself. So as I go back, I can lean away from the door and support myself. Guys, I'm not gonna do anything too crazy on here. I'm not gonna be pulling as hard as I can, but from here, I can lean and put a decent amount of weight into this as I'm pulling myself up. This is really, really good for tempo work as you're going through, so don't feel like you have to do anything crazy. Obviously, you can't kip when your feet are on the ground, but when we're on here, everything's nice. You can really work on everything in between your shoulder blades, keeping that meat back between there, pulling yourself up to and back from here as you go through. All right, guys, so the next thing that we're gonna go over is how to create handles for kettlebells. So this is some nylon, uh, 5 eighths rope. It's, it's got a kern and a mantle on it, so uh, I believe people use it for rappelling as well. But what we can do with this, I bought 12 feet of it, which should give me enough for um, an extension to where I can pull a little bit more. We can make two handles out of these so we can make some kettlebells, stuff like that. So um, I'm going to show you how I created these knots and fused the ends of these ropes together. But this is about a two foot section if I had to guess. We are going to map it out here and then I'm gonna go down to where I do not have a knot on the rest of this rope. What you can see is I marked on the rope a couple inches higher. This is where I'm going to cut and then fuse the rope, and so we will go from there. So I'm gonna go over this box where I have a knife, where I have the rest of the rope. Be careful, don't cut your fingers off, but be adults. Go down on the rope. The one part that is a little bit uh, unfortunate about ropes that have outsides and inside pieces to them, and I'll show you what that means in a second, is this outside and inside piece 
can come apart. And that's not the greatest thing in the world for what we want. So then you actually have to tie them together and fuse them. The way you do that is with a lighter. So you take a lighter, get it flamed, ignited, whatever you want to call it. Get it to where you can actually see the plastic inside of the rope melting a little bit. And what's happening here is it's binding the outside and the inside together and creating a little bit more of a seal, if you want to say it that way, um, on the outside of this rope. So get it to where it's in flames, blow it out. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll it on this box over here and just try to get everything matted down to itself. So instead of having frayed ends, which is what I have on this recently cut piece, now I have this nice tight and controlled area. From here, I'm just going to tie a little knot in the end of it, get it nice and tight, cinch it down on itself. And then from here, I don't know where that other one went, we have another handle. These guys are going to stick in the bucket, we're going to put concrete on it, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so now what we are going to do is we are going to mix the concrete together so we can create our own kettlebell. So remember we just made one of these guys. This is the handle we're going to use for our kettlebell. So I have these two smaller buckets. These are each two-gallon buckets, and again, that was on the list that I bought from Lowe's. I normally mix concrete together in a wheelbarrow, but since not all of us have access to a wheelbarrow, um, I wanted to do it with all the stuff that we bought. So um, I did not buy this at Lowe's, but I did buy another five gallon bucket of these. I just, if this is the one that's gonna get dirty, I want this one to get dirty. So what I've done is I have a full five gallon bucket worth of water, but if you look on the outside of the concrete mix, uh, it says three quarts of water, which is what I have measured in this measuring bucket here. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna pour it into the five gallon bucket. Guys, it is important when you do any sort of concrete mix that you put water in first, because if you take the concrete, you dump the concrete in first and you put the water on top of it, you're gonna have a lot of dry spots. Um, it's not gonna harden correctly. And from there, we're gonna take this guy, we're going to cut the top of it. I don't like to make a huge hole because I'll probably screw something up and I'd rather make a little bit of a mess than a big mess. Um, guys, another thing to worry about with concrete, um, it's not an exact science. I'll probably have to add a little bit more water. Um, but on that end, you just take this, you're going to dump a little bit of it in. This is an 80 pound bag, so it's a little bit on the heavier side, but it's going to make a little bit of a cloud as you go through. Make sure to do this in a vaguely ventilated area. All right. So one thing that I do when I pour concrete, um, I leave a little bit extra in the bag just so I can mix up the initial part at the beginning and then I'll add a little bit at the end. So I'm gonna start mixing this guy. We will come back in a second and then we will go from there. All right guys, like I said, uh, it's way easier if you have a wheelbarrow, way easier to do it in that. Um, but again, I wanted to use the tools that we had bought. Um, this is a piece of trim that goes on the bottom um, of your walls. So just grab a random stick in your house. Um, you can mix concrete together. The consistency you are looking for on this is just something that's spreadable. So like a really liquidy, like crunchy peanut butter is kind of what you're looking for. Nothing too crazy. Again, uh, there's no exact science when it comes to this stuff, especially for what we're doing. Um, but this is about what it's supposed to look like as you're getting through. Uh, as you see, I have this bucket off to the side. This guy I just use as like a quick rinse for all of the tools. Um, concrete's super easy to clean off of stuff. When it's wet, if you let it dry, um, you're kind of ruined. So I did let this guy dry just a little bit. It should be, it's only been about five minutes, but it should still come off pretty easily. But the reason I wanted to use this bucket, which you notice is from AutoZone, as opposed to these guys, which I just bought, um, just in case I accidentally let this guy dry for a couple minutes, I would rather have this be the bucket that is tainted than the nicer buckets that I have over here. But teach their own as you're going through. Guys, now what you're going to do is we have these two gallon buckets. Again, this was stuff that I got from Lowe's as well. They are this little handle guy that we made. The reason that we put these knots in it is so when it's down at the bottom of this pail, 
it gives the concrete something to hold on to. If you just put two ropes without the ends, imagine I untied these knots and it was just a rope, um, it would be able to slide out a little bit easier than it would uh, given the knots on them. So with this rope in there, you're just gonna kind of get it to where it's outside the edge a little bit. And then just slowly pour the concrete in bit by bit. And as you're going through, just be careful as you're pouring it in because it will kind of try to clump up on you like this. Feel free to use a shovel. I have this little hand trowel that I'm gonna be able to scoop stuff in as I go. But the idea, just make sure you get those knots sank in to the bucket, because the deeper those knots are, the less likely this guy is to come apart. You're gonna fill this guy up, and my idea with it is, as long as the density of the concrete is the same, if I fill it up to the top, I shouldn't have any problem as far as there being a weight difference. I do have two kettlebells. Fortunately, we were able to pick some up um, from a gym that happened to close, but if you, uh, we do not have a set of matching weight kettlebells. So my idea with these, is hopefully these become our matching weight kettlebells um, and then we can go from there. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill these guys. I'll come back when they're filled. All right guys, so um, we are close to the end. I got them all uh, filled out. I use this little gardening trowel that we have to fill some stuff up. Um, one thing to think about when you get to the top is the water will rise out of the top a little bit. Uh, but as you're putting in the last little bit of concrete to these guys, don't be afraid to use your hands. Again, when it's on your hands, that's what this little water bin's for to my side. Um, grab a couple handfuls. Just make sure the top is all packed down. Um, when you think about concrete, you want to make sure that you fill all those little gaps on the inside. So think wherever there's going to be a gap, there's going to be a crack, or if there's going to be a crack is where this is going to break. So make sure as you're patting everything down, make sure everything looks good, everything's nice and tight to the sides. You've got a little bit of room um, as you're going through just to make sure everything looks good there. But that's kind of what we're thinking of from the beginning. So I'm gonna wash my hands now, and we're actually gonna weigh these just to see how close they are. Um, but worst case, uh, if they're a couple pounds off, it's not the end of the world either. So I'm gonna step on this scale just to get it turned on. And then guys, remember, this handle isn't tight in there right now. Use this one for the time being. So as I set this guy down, showing me, oh, that's pretty cool, like 35.8, um, so pretty close to yellow kettlebells, so that's pretty cool. And then on this side, we will see, gotta reset this. This is a little bit lighter, this is probably 30. Ooh, what did I say the other one was? 35.8. Woo, right on the dot, that's sweet. Um, so they're both exactly 35.8 um, on the dot. Again. What we know, the buckets are the same weight, the rope's about the same uh, length. So after, as we break these molds apart, everything should still be in place. Cool part about concrete, you gotta wait a couple, couple days for it to set. So we are gonna take these, we are gonna set them to the side, and we're gonna put the rest of the stuff together. Cool? Guys, next thing we're gonna go over is this guy. Uh, again, the label says it's a post hole digger tamping bar. Um, I've always known them as a spud bar. So whatever you wanna call, however you need to look them up. Uh, most people know them as spud bars to my knowledge, but um, that may have just been the place that I worked that called them spud bars either way. Um, so guys, what we're gonna do now is we are going to label this. Um, cool part about it, if you see on here, it is 16 pounds or 7.3 kilograms. If a training bar that we have at the gym is 15 pounds, so worst case, everything else that we do with this doesn't work, we have a training bar. It's almost the exact dimensions as a barbell. I can get my hands around it into a pretty good false grip. If I'm gonna go to a snatch grip on this guy, I can get my hands all the way out wide so it's resting in the crease of my hips with my hands out wide. I can lock it over here and I can put it on my bar, like, or back, like a barbell. Um, super versatile, I was thinking about it. And I have some post holes that I'm gonna dig in my backyard in a couple days. Um, this guy's gonna come in handy as I do that as well. So um, we're gonna get a couple uses out of this guy. Guys, first thing I did when I found this is, this guy is, um, I'd say probably six, maybe five feet. Uh, five, yeah, about five feet um, on this guy. The middle is gonna be weighted differently because there's this edge and then this edge as they go through. So the way I kind of found the center is I just put my finger like an okay sign along it. Obviously this side's still heavier, so I kept going. Still heavier on that side, kind of just like a scale at the doctor's office until I got to where the middle of this tape is and then it didn't really move left or right any. It kind of found that center area. So from there, I knew 
that the middle was somewhere in this tape. So I marked it with a Sharpie. Then I just took some normal athletic tape that we have at the gym and wrapped around. So I know that this is the center of gravity when it comes to this guy. Then what I did from there is I went to the outside of the bar. On the outside, you see that there's two distinct tape lines here. I wanted to get it deep enough to where there's a groove to where the handle of those buckets is actually going to rest in this area right here. So that's going to be here. And what I have to do from the other side, because this diameter is the same all the way across, I'm going to take a tape measure from the base of this guy. I'm going to go to the middle of my tape, which is about 26 and a half inches. And then I'm going to go from the middle of my tape here to 26 and a half inches, which is right here on the bar. And remember, that was this edge right here on the tape. So it's the close edge of the tape. So I don't want to have that be the center. I want that to be where the close edge of the closest part of the tape is. So I'm going to take a couple seconds to tape this guy. Uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, so again, remember it was 26 and a half inches from here to this part. So I want it to be 26 and a half inches from here to the edge of this tape, which on this guy it is. Remember, I want it to be this close edge of the tape. When it comes to taping it, I just need enough, enough depth in that tape to where something can actually sit in the groove. So just don't go around it one time is kind of what I'm saying. Make sure to go around it a couple times. If you go around it a couple times, you're gonna to start to get the depth of the tape as well. Nice part about this, because it is a cloth tape, it's gonna have a little bit of give to it. And because of that, you're gonna kind of be able to have a little bit of wiggle room with it when it comes to play. So I'm gonna wrap this around, um, I'd say just a rough estimate of 10 times or so. Um, and then after I do that, I'm gonna move. If you see, it's not even a centimeter on that side, not even a half inch. So I'm gonna go from here just a little bit wider so that there's enough of a gap to where that white part of the handle will fit. And I'm gonna wrap this around a couple times here. And then after I do that 10 or so times, I'll have that groove. Once I have the groove in there, I'll be able to put that bucket in. Once the bucket's in, we'll be able to load this guy. All right guys, so we're back with the spud bar. Again, where we left off, um, we had just put the tape around this guy to create those little depressions in there. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to get ourselves figured out to where we can actually load this barbell again. It's only 16 pounds, but this guy is pretty dense, it's pretty sturdy. If I drop it, it's pretty solid as we go through there. So as I'm going here, the idea of what we're gonna do, and again, it's a little bit sketchy, but so is coronavirus, so we'll get through this together. You're gonna take this, you're gonna put it around, and like I said, this little white part of the handle is actually what's gonna be lifted with the bucket. So there's no weight in them, so there's nothing to actually support on them. But from here, if you see both buckets are gonna be evenly loaded, depending on how much gravel I wanna put in them. This is gonna give us a lot of versatility with what we can do. We can either A, do some bent over rows, and think everything about this is gonna be a pretty strict movement. If I try to do any sort of cleans or snatches or anything like that, we're not gonna get anywhere outside of having a couple broken buckets and a lot of gravel in your garage. So as I'm doing this, one thing we're gonna do as we're loading this is these bags of gravel each weigh 50 pounds. So I wanted to make sure I standardized and I'm pretty sure each of these bags of gravel was like $4.55 or something super cheap like that. So this bag actually fits perfectly inside of the bucket. And with that, if I do have any other projects that I want to do down the road with gravel, I don't have to take the gravel, put it in the bucket, and worry about making a mess everywhere. Again, that's gonna kind of limit myself to having 50 pounds, 50 pounds, so 100 pounds. So it'd be 116 pounds total on the barbell. We can do a lot with 116 pounds. Also a cool part about it, you can take a bag, you can open it up, take your scale, 25 pounds here, 25 pounds there. You have a 50, 65 pound barbell on that part. Then you can take, I bought four different bags of gravel and I put on that shopping list, four bags of gravel. That can get up to 100 pounds on each one, whether or not 100 pounds actually fits in these buckets at all. Um, these guys, I just had about 100 pounds of cement in there and it was working totally fine and it felt totally fine. Again, we're gonna test all this stuff out when we come back just to make sure everything is set right, everything works well. Um, but for the starters, um, this shopping list kind of gives you a couple things to put together, um, gives you a couple things to work on. We have our ability to make 
those kettlebells. Um, we can also, at some point, once the kettlebells dry, we can use those as weight so long as we have the kettlebells weighing the same on both of those pieces of concrete. So like I said, it's a little bit of a guessing game. Uh, we'll see how everything works when we come back, but we'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, uh, one last thing that we're going to go over is this PVC pipe here. As we do this, um, this guy's right at about four and a half feet, if I had to guess. Uh, I did not have to cut this. So this was a standard stock PVC pipe at Lowe's. Um, it's really nice because if I were to go into a snatch grip on this PVC pipe, my hands don't go outside of where it is because I usually grab here on this, which this gives me a ton of stuff that I can work on as I go through. I can put this on my back. I can work on keeping a nice, strong arch in my back as I'm back squatting. I could try to get myself into a good front rack position. I can overhead, put this guy in an overhead position and really make sure that I keep my forward or my armpits in that forward direction as I'm going through. Um, I could work on positions when it comes to cleaning. I can work on positions when it comes to snatches. Uh, I can work on high pulls. I can work on just about everything when it comes to a PVC pipe. Uh, I believe this was somewhere in the range of like $4. Um, if you don't have one, get one anyway. Um, they're super versatile. Uh, break it down to the basics. If you think you're good, um, take it back to the basics uh, because you're probably not. So as we go through this guy, um, this is super versatile. Like I said, I would get one. Um, I did get one. So. Guys, one more thing. The sandbag that Brandon had put a video together for is another thing that we're going to be using for this garage gym. So um, I bought four bags of gravel. Um, and again, one's going to go for this bucket, one's going to go for this bucket, and then I have two others. Uh, those could be those bags that you bought for sand. Uh, sand's a little bit cheaper than gravel is by about 60 cents a bag. Um, so feel free to grab sand. Uh, if you did not, and then from there, grab a roll of duct tape. I did actually buy duct tape as well. I bought a really expensive roll of duct tape. So from there, like you can pretty much pick anything else down the line from there. Um, and you can do exactly what he did where he was, he was wrapping those sandbags together because we will use one of those um, for these strongman videos, for these power hour videos as we get through putting them together. So keep that in mind. Again, a couple bags of gravel or two bags of gravel, two bags of sand. Um, it'll get you to about the same price point on that.